What are the typical questions that you can expect during an interview for a medical writing position? Well, in this video, we're going to cover that and more. And my name is Josh, and I have over 10 years of experience in technical writing. And I'm also the founder of Technical Writer HQ. And this video here will help you prepare for an ace your job interview. But before we dive into it, take a moment to subscribe to our channel. And that way, you won't miss any of our future videos. Now, let's go ahead and get started. Medical writers play a crucial role in the medical writing industry. They produce or assist with the production of technical, informative, educational, or promotional medical content. The specific jobs that medical writers do depend on their background, expertise, skills, and area of employment. The job interview is a critical part of the hiring process too. Even though the educational background and experience listed on your resume are important, face-to-face -face medical writing interviews allow the hiring manager to meet and get to know you. And during interviews, most hiring managers are interested in learning three things about you. Your background, personality, and character as a professional, and your experience in the field of medical writing, and then we have the value it would bring to the organization. The most common interview questions help hiring managers unearth insights into these three categories. And before we jump into the actual interview questions, let's go ahead and first review some important things about the interview process that will help you to get into the right mindset and set a great foundation. So the first thing is you need to get the basics right. Prepare your resume and portfolio. Read the job description carefully and make sure you get dressed for success. And you may or may not be able to answer questions in the best way, but if you get the basics wrong, well, then no amount of interview skills can really help you land the job. So treat it as a learning experience as well, and rather than getting stressed out, make sure that you're going in there to come out stronger and better no matter what the outcome is. So even if you don't get the job, you'll learn many things that'll help you in other interviews in your career. And you also learn many things that will come in handy when you yourself have to conduct interviews. So is the job right for you is a big one. Just as the interviewers are trying to figure out if you are the person they need, an interview is also an opportunity for you to learn about the company, its people, culture, and the number of factors that make up an organization. And at times we can get too focused on one thing and miss the big picture. For example, if a job advertisement mentions a particularly high salary, then it's possible to get totally focused on that one aspect. Ignore other important factors. So use the opportunity to learn about the company so that you can make an informed decision and understand the question intent. Every question has an intent to it. So what is the interviewer trying to get out of it? So it's really a question behind the question. And if you understand that question intent, only then can you give a good answer. So you also want to treat every question as an opportunity too. And once you understand that question intent, it's going to be easier to do so. So from there, what you can do is answer in a way that builds your credibility and convinces the interviewer that you are the right person for the job. And often you want to focus on how your work in the past was relevant and had impact and who are the key stakeholders. And with that said, I went ahead and compiled a list of the most important medical writer interview questions and answers in this guide. And you want to go ahead and answer it within that framework of how it's relevant, the key stakeholders, and the impact that it had. Now the actual questions that you'll get asked will vary from interview to interview. So think of this as a guide, as a resource that will help you prepare for landing your dream medical writing job, not the end all be all. And I went ahead and divided the medical writing interview questions into the following categories. We have general questions, technical questions, organization and time management questions, feedback questions, conflict resolution questions, writing process questions, career path questions, management and leadership questions, and that covers all the different areas. So you're going to come out of this video very prepared. Now most interviews start with some general questions, of course. So these questions are for the interviewer to learn more about you and why you applied for the medical writing position. And the first one here is, tell us about your experience with medical writing. Now this is an open-ended question designed to get to know you better. It has no right or wrong answer. So treat this question as an opportunity to market yourself and increase your credibility. Now one important thing to keep in mind is that you don't have to restrict yourself to just medical writing. So if you are a medical writer with a lot of experience, you can share many details about your previous experiences. You can share details about the organizations and industry sectors you have worked for and your successes as well as the challenges that you faced and how you ultimately overcame them. And skills and other forms of writing are often valuable for the hiring organization. So if you have previous experience in, let's say, technical writing or copywriting, you can share that as well. Also, if you have managed and led teams, be sure to share that with the interviewer. 
Since this is an open-ended question that does not deal with a specified aspect of medical writing, it gives you a lot of flexibility in answering. So use it to your advantage to build credibility. And two, what motivated you to pursue a career in medical writing? Now this is a valid question because an active interest in what you do is essential for success. The interviewer wants to know if you have an active interest and also if you can back up your interest with tangible reasons. A professional can have many reasons for choosing a career as a medical and scientific writer, such as an interest in writing and good writing skills, and relevant medical education with a degree such as a PhD, PharmMD, or MD, and relevant experience in medical research, whether as a physician or simply just a healthcare professional in another capacity, and maybe just an interest in the medical research field and desire to contribute to it, or simply a combination of all the above. And in general, and especially when discussing interests and passions, what we express non-verbally carries more weight than what we say verbally. So share your reasons and give an honest answer, because if you don't, people can often see right through your body language. Now, three here is, what are your greatest strengths as a medical writer? As a professional, it's important to know your strengths. As a writer, you certainly need excellent writing skills, of course. And when answering this question, you need to demonstrate self-awareness and confidence. Don't come across such as like arrogant or unnecessarily humble. The skills you should share should be relevant to the job you're applying for, and there should be detailed context around them, especially of how you've made impact and how you've helped people and how you learned these skills in the first place. So share some of your strongest, most relevant skills backed up with success stories. And some examples of strengths could be writing communication skills, research, enthusiasm, task prioritization, determination, analytical thinking, communication skills, and organization skills. Remember to back up your claims with examples though from your professional experience and highlight the impact as well as the stakeholders involved and more. So what is your approach to research is another question that can come out. An immense amount of scientific information is now available in the public domain. So sources of information you can include, you can say books, medical journals, databases such as Medline, PubMed, Embase, and Micromedics. With so many available information sources, unless you have the correct research strategy, sometimes it's impossible to find what you're looking for. So a good research strategy will include ultimately knowing where to search, using only authentic sources of information, using the correct keywords, evaluating search results for relevance and accuracy, classifying and filing helpful information for later retrieval. And then we have technical questions. The following are some questions related to the technical side of medical writing. So the first one here, what are references and citations? Knowing the difference between citations and references is essential for any medical and scientific writer or just any technical writer. Now both citations and references point towards sources of information. The two are also linked. The citation within the main body of the text points to the corresponding reference in the list of references often added at the end of the main text, usually in a reference list, uh, such as a bibliography. Now the differences between the two are, well, you have purpose. The purpose of a citation is to point to additional information, whereas the purpose of a reference is to supply that additional information. Then we have location. Citations appear within the main text whereas references are added towards the end of the main text as a list. Then we have amount of information. Citations give minimal information, whereas references provide all the relevant details. And we have length. Citations are short, either comprising the last names of authors in the year of publication or appearing as footnotes. Now in contrast here, references are long, can run to several lines. And Another question that can pop up here is what formatting and referencing styles have you used most frequently? So a style guide or manual of styles is a set standard for writing, formatting, and designing of documents. Some of the relevant style guides for medical writers are the AMA style, refers to the American Medical Association style, the styling of journal manuscripts as described in the AMA manual of style, a guide for authors and editors. Now many biomedical journals and other medical publications, especially those in the US, ask authors to use the AMA style to prepare their manuscripts, scientific writing style, grammar, punctuation, and references. And they have APA style. This refers to the style of documentation of sources used by the American Psychological Association as published in the publication manual of the American Psychological Association. The APA provides specific guidelines for nearly all aspects of manuscript formatting, from font choice to margins and punctuation, of course. 
And then we have the ever popular Chicago style. This refers to the Chicago Manual of Style published in 1906 by the University of Chicago Press. It's one of the most widely used and respected style guides in the US. Now, another question to look out for is what do you know about statistics? Yes, this can seem a little bit odd if you're not familiar with the medical writing field, but it's important because an understanding of statistics is necessary for almost all good medical writing. One of the best ways to understand statistics is by attending workshops on medical statistics conducted by professional statisticians. Some statistical terms of interest for medical writers are confidence interval. So the mean of your estimate plus and minus a variation in that estimate. It refers to the range of values you can expect your estimate to fall between if you redo your test with a certain confidence level. And then we have regression analysis, which is a statistical method that allows you to examine the relationship between two or more variables of interest. And we have randomization scheme, a process which each participant in a study or trial has an equal likelihood of being assigned to treatment versus referent groups. And then we have the p-value, and this is the measure which measures the probability of obtaining the observed results assuming that the null hypothesis is true. And then we have something what's called a t-test, which is a statistical test used to compare the means of two groups. Now that's just some statistical terms that you need to know. It's important to maybe take a statistical class online, something to really get you up to speed on the terminology because there are many more terms than just these ones. And then we have the fourth question, which is what is the drug development process? And each country has its own drug development process. And the one in the US is as follows. First, you have discovery and development, where research for a new drug begins in the laboratory. And then we have preclinical research, where drugs undergo laboratory and animal testing to answer basic questions about safety. And next is clinical research. Drugs are tested on people to ensure they are safe and effective. And of course, FDA review. FDA review teams thoroughly examine all the submitted data related to the drug or device and decide to approve or not to approve it. And the FDA post-market safety monitoring is the next, which is the FDA monitors all drug and device safety once products are available for the public. And the fifth question here is, what software tools have you used? Software and computer-based tools are essential for all modern professionals. Medical writers need digital software for authoring. That may include MS Word and Scrivener and other editor-like tools. And we also have time tracking and invoicing software such as TrackTime and QuickBooks. And then we have reference management software such as EndNote and Reference Manager. And then we have project plan software, things like Evernote and Docker. And we have backup software, such as Carbonite and Dropbox. And there's imaging software like Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator. Now you can share the names of the software and digital tools that you have used previously as well in the comments below this video to help others out and just to let them know what's working for you. Now, be ready to admit that you don't know all the available tools. If they're asking you like, hey, do you know this tool? Just be honest. At the same time, express your willingness to learn any new software tool that you may need to. Now let's hop into organization and time management questions. So moving on to questions aimed at finding out how you organize yourself and manage your time. So one is, how do you manage a weekly word count? Zig Ziglar once said, you can't hit a target you cannot see, and you can't see a target you do not have. And that's very true for writing documentation, especially for medical writing documentation. And some examples of goals that writers use include writing for a certain amount of time each day, completing one chapter of a book or a manuscript every week, and a daily or weekly word count. And the question is about how you would achieve a weekly word count goal. In other words, what would be your plan or system for achieving the goal? So really focus on the details of how you prioritize. If you're an experienced writer, you likely know how much you can write on average during a complete workday or week about different types of subjects. Obviously, the word count per day varies depending on the assignment and the amount of research required. But in any case, with experience, you have a fair idea of your average productivity. And if your average daily word count allows you to meet the weekly goal, then you can continue to work as you do. And if your average daily word count does not allow you to meet the weekly goal, well, then you need to optimize your system. And optimizing can involve working more each day or delegating one or more time-consuming tasks to a junior associate. And then we have two, how do you handle deadlines for multiple projects? As a medical writer, you'll most likely be working on multiple concurrent projects. And you'll have to attend meetings, give presentations, and also do many other things simultaneously. And even if you're not experienced medical writer, knowing how to manage multiple things simultaneously is part of life. 
And that's just how life is. And through this question, the hiring manager wants to know your process for prioritization, organization, and maintaining an efficient workflow. And if you are an experienced medical writer, then you will have developed systems that allow you to work on and manage multiple projects so you can keep outputting great pieces of medical writing. And you can share relevant details of your system, such as how you prioritize projects, what those column titles look like, and maybe what the exact stages are for until a project is completed. And then you can talk about how you manage your time as well as your preferred project management tools. And you can share your reasons for using these tools and also how you use them for maximizing efficiency. So suppose you're applying for an entry level position and lack experience. Well, in that case, you can share the systems you use while managing multiple priorities during your academic career or internship. And then we have feedback questions. Moving on to questions aimed at finding out how you deal with and deliver feedback. And this is a critical part of success in any type of position you want to hold. And the first one here is how do you deal with criticism from editors and peer reviewers? One of the significant benefits of working in an organization is that you learn more from others who have more knowledge, experience, and insight. Editors, senior medical writers, and subject matter experts will review your work and give you feedback. And in some cases, you'll understand and agree with the feedback. And in other cases, you will strongly disagree. So how do you answer the question? Well, feedback helps you to learn and grow, and that is why you should demonstrate your appreciation for the feedback. And even if the feedback is highly critical and you disagree with it, you have to acknowledge it and thank the reviewer for their input. You can discuss the feedback with the reviewer to understand their viewpoint as well. And as you do this, and even if you don't incorporate the feedback into your work, you will learn and improve. And then we have number two here. How would you go about providing difficult feedback to another writer? And this is a great question because people find feedback hard to handle, especially if it's very critical. This is also why people hesitate to give candid feedback because they expect an adverse reaction. One effective method of giving feedback that alleviates this problem is the sandwich method. The main message or feedback is sandwiched between positive comments. And using the sandwich method for feedback, you would tell the writer what they have done right and the importance and value of what they have done right. You'd also tell the writer what needs to improve. One thing to note here is that only telling the writer what needs to improve is not sufficient. You should also tell the writer how to make the required improvements. And if you're not sure, then just be candid about your lack of clarity there. You also always want to end with the positive comments about the work done by the writer. And next we have conflict resolution questions. So here are some questions related to this. Number one is what conflicts have you encountered as a medical writer and how do you resolve them? Conflicts are part of personal and professional life and there's simply no way to avoid them. Any advice that tells you to avoid conflicts at all costs is really not connected to reality and you have to realize that it's simply part of being in the workplace. And ignored conflicts tend to grow over time and reappear at inopportune moments. Therefore, it's always best to resolve a conflict as soon as you recognize it. So to do that, you have to learn how to handle conflicts appropriately. The central part of conflict resolution is identifying the issue or cause of the conflict and how you and others perceive the issue. And there are many strategies for resolving conflicts. The conflict resolution strategy you use depends on the situation. The Thomas Kilman model identifies the following approaches to conflict resolution and this is a model that you can bring up in your interview process. So it starts with accommodating, taking steps to satisfy the other party's concerns or demands at the expense of your own needs or desires. And then we have compromising, which involves finding an acceptable resolution that will partly but not entirely satisfy the concerns of all parties involved. And then we have competing, satisfying your desires at the expense of the other parties involved. And we have collaborating, which involves finding a solution that entirely satisfies the concerns of all parties involved. Now let's dive into writing process questions. So with this, the first question that comes about is what is your writing process? Now professionals develop systems or processes for everything they do, and processes help to break down larger tasks into smaller and more manageable entities. Experienced medical writers should not have any trouble answering this question. However, if you lack experience, at least knowing about a typical medical writing process will demonstrate that you have prepared for the interview. A demonstration of proper preparation builds credibility like nothing else. And the typical writing process for any medical writing assignment is as follows. First is understanding the project brief. Before writing anything, the medical writer must understand the purpose of the document 
and the sponsor's goal. So maybe that's the key stakeholder who wants to push this document forward as part of a larger project. And it's also necessary to know the timelines and the required data and how to obtain it in the review approval process. And when it comes to getting different types of information, that may be understanding who your subject matter experts are that you need to communicate with. Now, you may also be doing literature search and information review. A relevant and comprehensive literature review can yield valuable information that a medical writer can use to support the document under preparation. Authoring and compiling the document is the next step here. And drafting the first version of the document while following the in-house or client style guide is very useful for reducing subsequent review and revision time. So hopefully you have a style guide that you can just go back to and rely on. Then we have the review process itself. A self-review by the medical writer followed by a review of the content and formatting by a senior medical writer or a subject matter expert, and then data verification by a peer writer or other subject matter expert. And of course we have formatting and editing. Formatting and editing documents are essential skills for every writer. Documents are required for print publication or electronic publishing and require rigorous copy editing, proofreading, and checking for formatting requirements. And we have approval. Scientific documents need approval from a designated approver, usually an expert, and the approver may be in-house or external. Adequate time must also be allowed for the approver to review and approve the document. And after approval is publishing, which is making the material available in digital format for online or print access. Now, a question that may pop up here is how would you describe your review process? So once a document is ready, it must be reviewed to make sure that there are no errors and all important elements are in place. A good review process is comprised of a checklist. They want to make sure you have a process, so having a checklist is important to mention, and this checklist is of curated items that need review and rechecking. Furthermore, proofreading the entire document a few times is very important. You can share your review process, how you ensure that the proposal preparation and review processes are completed well before the submission deadline, as well as how you communicate with the different subject matter experts to ensure all factual information is in your document. And this leads us to another question that we have here, which is what would be your process for writing a literature review? Literature reviews form the basis for all types of scientific writing. The process for a literature review involves the following steps. You have adequate planning, which is keeping the review focused on the area of interest. You have a proper search strategy with a focus on the proper keywords. You have use of authentic information sources, fact checking of all data and statistics, classification of retrieved information, and synthesis of information obtained from different sources. And number four is what resources would you consult to obtain information about, let's say, an obscure medical topic? Well, the best source of information about obscure medical topics or any medical topic in general are ultimately subject matter experts. As you work as a medical writer, you'll develop a network of contacts in the industry over time. You'll learn about experts in the various areas that make up medicine and medical devices and much more. So instead of spending a lot of time searching and coming up empty handed, well, you should consult the experts who will then point you towards sources of relevant, authentic, and accurate information. And the fifth question here is what would you do if the task you've been given is ambiguous and lacking clarity? A project sponsor is a person or group who owns a project and provides resources and support for the project to enable its success. Now, if a task you've been given is ambiguous and lacks clarity, well, then the first thing you should do is consult with the project sponsor to obtain more information and more clarity. So make sure you always have as much clarity as you can before moving forward, because otherwise you may be going 100 miles in the wrong direction. Now we have career path interview questions. And the first one that comes up here is, what is your process for improving your medical writing skills? So there are many avenues available for learning and skill improvement, including certifications, online and in-person courses, industry publications, and guidance from peers and mentors. Now this is an important question because you can use it to your advantage by sharing how you have improved your skills over the years. And you can also share your plan for improving skills in the future. And often some good answers here are to say that you're trying to build a community of experts in this field or that you already have one that is quite developed and that you're relying on. And that really shows that you are passionate about the work they do. And the second question we have here is where do you see yourself after five years? The desire to grow, improve, and advance is part of human nature. And organizations want to hire professionals who want to grow and have clarity about how they will achieve growth. This is because a growing professional will benefit the organization in many ways. Do not give a vague answer to this question though. You should have a prepared and well-defined answer 
to this question that contains two elements. So your goal, exactly where you want to see yourself after five years, for example, in a senior medical writer role or a management role overseeing a team of medical writers, the plan for achieving your goal. So components of the plan can include a medical writing training, including becoming a certified medical writer, medical training, management training, personal development, and working with a mentor. And this leads us to management and leadership questions. And the first one that pops up is what is your management style? Even if you have never managed a team, you need to learn about management styles. Why? Well, as your career progresses sooner or later, you'll likely have to lead a team of writers. And if you keep progressing, a time will come when you won't be writing. You will manage and lead others. Now, the best way to answer this question is by saying that you are flexible in your approach and would manage according to the situation the available resources. And to have a couple management styles that are models that you can bring up to show that you've done your research. Now, based on the job description and your knowledge about the company, you can tailor your response to the company conducting the interviewing. And there you have it. We just went over a ton of different questions that you can expect during a medical writing interview to get your medical writer job. And if you feel like you got a lot out of this video, make sure to like the video, subscribe to our channel. And again, my name is Josh, I'm the founder of Technical Writer HQ, and I'll go ahead and see you in some of our other videos where we make sure that you become a great technical writer, and that includes everything from medical writing to grant writing and much more. I'll see you there. Cheers.